What's going on everybody? This is Jeff. Today I'm going to make this video to talk about things to do in Maui. So I've been living here long enough now, you know, coming up on six months. Visited here several times before I came here. Lived in Hawaii now for three years. Definitely got enough uh, insight now to successfully deliver a quality video about things to do, give some ideas to make your Maui trip um, enjoyable. Now, first thing I want to say is if you're planning a trip to Maui, I would say give yourself seven days. So there's basically what I consider to be two sides of the island divided by a valley. This is the way that I perceive it, okay? You have your West Maui Mountains, which is where Lahaina is, you know, Napili. Then you have Haleakala, which is basically at the very south, southern point is Hana. So when I'm looking at the islands, there are two different there's two different approaches that I would take. So Hana or the Haleakala side, one side is completely full, like rainforest forest, a <laughs> rainforest uh, jungles with waterfalls and all that, and just a lot of water. The other side, which is not so <laughs> inhabited, um, that not a lot of people go to, is basically just arid desert that begins just past Haleakala National Park where the o Ohio pools are. Okay, so just to get straight into it and start talking about some of the things to do, I'm going to start in the ha on the Haleakala side. Okay, so let's just say one of the most popular things that people think about when they come to Maui is sun gazing at the house of the sun. That's Haleakala. So I think that's, I think that takes a lot of time to do and it, it, it seems to be time consuming. And if you're coming to Hawaii for tropical stuff, Haleakala is not tropical. It's basically like moon, Mars crater looking environment. I would say that you could potentially come to Maui and bypass that. Even though on most tourism sites it's considered to be the the premier thing to do. I would say no it's not because if you're coming to Hawaii to go up into the mountains, I mean, you can get that same kind of experience in Sierra Nevadas, the Rocky Mountains, the Appalachians, um, the Grand Tetons, the Nali National Park. I mean, mountains are all over the mainland. So, are you coming to Hawaii to go climb up a big mountain to go look at, I guess, the sun? <laughs> okay, see, so, I mean, it's cool, I guess, but for me, I think you can come to Hawaii and get a lot done without doing the number one supposed thing, Haleakala. All right, so, the number one thing for me is going to be the road to Hana. Now the road to Hana is about two, two hours long just to get to Hana, depending on how many pit stops you take and how slow you take it. It's advised that you take it slow. Now the, the tip that I have for you in that is there's going to be locals. Locals, they are used to making that trip every day or quite often, more so than you who's coming from somewhere else. And they're going to be speeding and they're going to be coming around. So. You don't, you don't want to be speeding because they know how to handle that road a lot better than you do. In fact, if it, the road to Hana might be one that you book with a tour company. But if you do choose to do it yourself, just be aware. Some of the things that do come up for some people is they get headaches, eye strain. Because the road is windy, it's fairly difficult to do both ways. So a tour seems to be one of the recommended routes. If you do choose to go around the other side of Hana, the, the dry side, you know, past the Ohio poles like I was telling you about, um, that road is kind of gnarly. <laughs> and you, I, I would say that I, I wouldn't want to see a bunch of people on that road. So the fact that it's low traffic volume is a good thing. And if, I, if me telling you to go on that road or someone else is telling you to go on that road, just be cautious that you know you don't want a high volume of traffic going the back way especially because some of these road the, ro the way the road is it goes straight up the cliff and the guy the, the one on the right side is t t typically good
but it's the one who's got to come down. You, uh, you definitely probably don't want to be the person that's coming in the back way to Hana. So coming in the dry side to the wet side, you want to come in the, the wet side, which is through Paia. You want to come in that way. If you're coming in the other way, like counterclockwise, that's the person that if it's, if there's a person coming up and the person coming down, that person is going to be like basically right on the cliff. So, um, the guy going up and around, he's going to be okay. But the person on the left, the side of the cliff, the ocean side, it's a little bit gnarly for real. So, um, but the road to Hana, there's a couple things. There's the, the black sand beach that I definitely recommend. I recommend actually walking past the black sand beach, um, to the other black sand cove, and then just kind of walking around that subtropical area, just bring a lot of water. It does, the sun is very hot there. If there's one place that you will get sunburned, of uh, all the places more so than others, because I don't, if for some of you, <laughs> you might think I'm BSing, but I'm telling you the truth. I've, I've, you know, been all around with, the, you know, my shirt off and, you know, getting sunbaked all across these islands. Some of these places do radiate uh, brighter sun. And the Black Sand Beach is one of those places that you will get sunburned a little bit faster than over here in Kihei or Kanapali. Not saying you won't get sunburned up there, but it seems to happen a little bit more over there, especially on a day when the sun's out. Now, the Black Sand Beach, like I said, hiking a little bit past there can be fun. If you're planning a camping trip, that's another cool thing. Be aware, it is also a burial ground. So I'm not saying don't go there because of that, but just keep that in mind, it is a burial ground. So uh, the locals, especially the Hawaiian culture, they encourage you to be extremely um, uh, care mindful of that, the fact that it is a graveyard, okay? That, that area is considered sacred. There's a lava tube there, a sacred, you know, for many years past. Now, <clears throat> there's also <clears throat> a red sand beach. Now, I, I know most of the time people don't bring up the red sand beach because it's you're not really welcome there. Okay, so I, I bring this up because if you look online, there's a lot of publicity about the Red Sand Beach. I mean, any all it takes is a simple search to see things to do in Maui, and you'll see that the Red Sand Beach is mentioned. Now, I will say this. The locals do not want you to go to the Red Sand Beach. If you ask a local for directions in Hana, for directions to the Red Sand Beach, and you get a negative look or a fuzzy eyeball, I, pre, I told you straight off the bat, now, the, the reason is, um, one, you have to cross semi-private land to get there. I don't know, I could say semi-private because I don't know the full story behind who owns what over there. It's not like chartered off, but that's the story is it's, you're crossing over some private land, but also that beach is considered extremely sacred for um, reasons that I don't exactly know, but I do know that it's also, it's just not encouraged to go to that beach. There's many other beaches that you can go to in Hana, like Koki Beach, Hamoa Beach, okay? So, yeah, that's that. Now, as far as waterfalls along the way, more often than not, if you see someone parked over on the side of the road, like a couple cars, that's probably a, a waterfall trail that you can hike to. And there's a couple of those at various different um, junctures on the way to Hana. There's also a lava tube. It's one of the largest lava tubes. It does take, it is kind of time consuming. So if you're trying to do Hana in one day, you might want to pass the lava tube. You might want to pass the um, Red Sand Beach. I'm, actually, I'm encouraging you to pass the Red Sand Beach anyway. It's very beautiful, but um, due to the fact that, you know, people don't really want you there, the locals, I would say, skip that. Um, Hamoa Beach is a chill spot. I think Koki Beach is really chill. It's really nice. Uh, Haleakala, the national park, if you like hiking, it's worth it. Like I said, if you're trying to do this on a, in, a, in a full day, um, you know, some of these places you can do without, but the must hits are the Black Sand Beach, the, um, the waterfalls, you gotta check out some of the waterfalls along the way and I would say Haleakala National Park because it is a national park and it is built for tourism, but they also have the pools of Bohio there. And you know, you can do some hiking and, and you know, um, you wanna go all the way to the, 
um, Haleakala National Park because that road from Hana to Haleakala National Park where the Ohio pools are is a very beautiful um, stretch of road. And at that point, you're on the full southern point of Maui. Um, if you look on Google Maps, they say that's where the heart chakra of Maui is. So, uh, you know, the thing about the, the people down there, the locals, you know, they have that mentality that Hawaii is not America. That, that is one of, that's the, one of the most isolated communities in all of Hawaii. It's also the most down to earth, full of aloha. But at the same time, they also don't play games with game with um, people who want to be tourists. Okay, it's cool to be going down there. I'm not trying to put a, a negative stigma on it, but what I'm saying is, don't go out there acting all hoity-toity, goofbally. You know, like, um, <laughs> you know, like thinking that your your tourist dollars count is what I'm saying. You just go there, you be very cool. You don't have to walk on eggshells. You just don't you don't do some of that like thinking that you're the tourist king or queen from who knows where over in Hana. It, that won't fly in Hana, okay? That flies over in Kanapali where, they, where they're specifically ordered to give you um, A++ service to get all the, you know, all your tourist dollars because that's where the money counts. Hana, no. The only time, they, they will just like you for being you because they show aloha, meaning like if you're cool, they're cool. But if you're getting in their way, being all touristy, um, you know, they just don't have, they don't have any patience for that. And like I said, you know, they're, they're down to earth people. Down to earth people aren't influenced by money. Okay. So like I said, that, that, I mean the, the whole Hana thing that takes up, that takes up one to two days. If you can try to stay one day in Hana. Okay. So you're gonna, you're good. You can, there's hotels, there's bed and breakfast, there's the Traviesa. Uh, there's camping up there. You know, you can you can try and find accommodation up there. Not everybody's going to be able to find accommodation up there because it's not a touristy spot. But if you can, I recommend probably trying to stay the night because that ride to and fro it, it is time consuming. You can also camp at Haleakala National Park. Okay, so Hana, that, uh, we'll just give Hana two days, okay? Because I recommend that you stay the night over there. Now, after you do Hana. You try try to do Hana early on in your trip. I think. I mean, obviously, it doesn't really matter when you do it. But if we're just pretending like you know you land on Maui and the first day, the first thing you do when you land in Maui is the next day go to Hana, do the Hana trip, whether it be with an excursion that takes one day or or an overnight stay. Now, your second day, I would say after you've done the road to Hana, why don't you do a beach day? Now, a beach day in Kihei at Big Beach. So you have Big Beach and Little Beach. Now I'm not saying spend the whole day at Big Beach, but I'm saying you can chill out at Big Beach, then you drive down the road, you can go to, um, you can go all the way down to La Perouse, or you can come back down to Kihei, um, go to Ulua Beach, which is a really great place to chill out. You're gonna wanna bring in, you, you can rent an umbrella and a, a, a chair, or a set of chairs for 24 hours. It's gonna cost you like 20 bucks. You know, and you can even get snorkel gear all with that, you know, for your day in Kihei right there at one of the, that's for two people, I would say, but right there at any of the snorkel stores in Kihei, I recommend just a, a beach day in Kihei, get some shaved ice, you know, get some lunch at one of the taco trucks, taco trucks, because I always eat taco trucks, but if you like more, um, if you're not a big taco truck fan, um, sorry. They have a lot of taco trucks here in Kihei. <laughs> All right, so then, you know, your second, your, your third day, something that I recommend, which, you know, as you can see, a lot of this stuff isn't costing you too much money, like the tours or no tour, you can still go to Hana. I'm only saying if you want to pay for the tour, do it. Now, um, the the next day is, you can, the next day after your beach day, check out the other side of the West Maui Mountains, so the east side of the West Maui Mountains, and that's that's a, a, another similar road that's not as long as the road to Hana, but it's very similar because it's one one lane. Some of the things that I like over there, they have the Waihee um, Trail, which is a it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a grueling hike because it's up a ridge. It's I would say you probably would want to be in pretty good shape for that. I'm not saying you have to be in Iron Man shape. But just beware, it, it is up a ridge. It's up a hike, in it, or it's a hike up a ridge. It takes about an hour and a half. So just be, 
prepared for that. Bring a lot of water. It is, it is fairly beautiful up there. You get a whole nother perspective of Maui and the views are quite amazing looking down towards um, Wailuku and you know over towards Haleakala in the foreground. Um, once you've done that hike, you could probably go up to the Olivine pools. Just check that out. You know, as long as it's not too busy, that's a nice stop. And then up past that is Nakalele uh, Blowhole. That's another nice area. And then past that, there's another hiking area that you might want to just walk around. It's kind of a romantic spot for you and your um, significant other if you if you're into that kind of stuff. Just hiking around a very beautiful high desert kind of environment. It's not tropical too much. And then after you go there, you can come. You you'll come to Honolulu Bay, um, and then into Napili. So, I would say that would probably take up your uh, a good portion of your afternoon. You probably go back to the hotel, and you know. Um, oh, one more thing you can do on that specific trip is check out the um, Iao Valley. You can do that. That, that's a very quick thing. That only takes like an hour unless you jump over the fence, which a lot of people do and they hike up the Eau Valley, but um, that only takes about an hour. So I would say you could throw that in the same day with the, the blowhole and the Olivine pools and the Waihee Trail. Um, so after, after a day like that, you're going to need another day back at the beach. And a, a, a beach, the beaches that I really like are... Um, like Napili Beach, I really like that one. I like, uh, yeah, I would say Napili Beach in that area, just up in that area is great. Just try to find a beach. There's a couple different ones around there. You can check on Google Maps. Um, like I said, it's worth it. Now, it's just a very beautiful environment up there, but it's a chill day, okay? There's turtles there also if you wanna see turtles. Now, after you, after you spend that day, after you spend the time at the beach, then you go down into Lahaina, you can hang out, maybe spend, spend a night out on the town now in Lahaina, uh, Lahaina on Front Street. So after you've been in Maui for a couple days and you know, you can go, you can afford, you've gotten a lot done and you've done a lot already. Now you can cut loose a little bit in, on Front Street, check out Fleetwoods and some of the other bars down there and not have to feel guilty if you wake up with a little bit of a hangover, right? So day four or five, you know, you're, you're gonna go out in the evening time and have a lot of fun. You've already done Hana, you got some stories to talk about the bar, you know, you've already done the west, the east side of the West Maui Mountains. Now, the day after that, depending on how you feel, you might wanna just chill out at the resort or hotel, the pool at Kaanapali, or you can, um, you know, if you're staying down here in Kihei, you might want to go to the Grand Wailea, right? But um, the next day after that, I would say if you haven't already done the Iao Valley, then you can do Iao Valley and then over to Ho'okipa and you can check out Paia. You can walk around Paia and the towns over there. And even if you want it, this would be a great day to take a stroll up to Haleakala. But on the way up to Haleakala, you can go through upcountry. You can check out Kula, Pukalani, Makawao, some of those small towns. So this would be more of like the, the checking out the small towns, you know, uh, the, the, the old sugar cane towns. These are very rustic towns, uh, beautiful, nice weather, about five to 10 degrees cooler than Kihei, Lahaina. Remember, Lahaina is actually the land of the relentless sun. So, so if you've spent a, a day at the beach in Kanapali, you know, you're just gonna be getting a lot of sun. Occasionally it does get a little bit breezy and rainy, I guess. But um, a, another place, if you're looking for a place to just camp, if you're looking to camp, Olawalu is a great place you can try and camp. Um, it is a little bit rugged. So, you know, the camping thing is rugged, but if you're into camping, you can camp Olawalu, you can camp at uh, Hosmer's Grove up in the Haleakala National Park. You could check out, um, you know, Haleakala National Park over by the Ohio pools. There's camping. There's Black Sand Beach camping. So there is a couple different camp areas that you can get set up. Now, for your last day, for your last day in um, Kihei after you've done Ho'okipa and 
By the way, Ho'okipa has some pretty cool, like, an area where there's a lot of turtles. Now, I will say this, keep your distance from the turtles. I'm saying like, seriously, there's about 20 to 30 turtles there at any given time. And the, the people that are standing there, watching you, they don't want you touching the turtles or getting close to the turtles, okay? You can surf there also, especially in the, the winter time. Now, if you're coming in the winter time, it is whale season, it is surfing season on the North Shore. Surfing on the South Shore is pretty decent in late spring or in spring and fall towards late summer fall but in the summertime there's hardly any surfing anywhere really in Maui I mean yeah there's people who will surf but it's not ideal season for surfing so another thing as far as weather goes it's been my experience that August and September are the hottest months so I would say the best time to come to Hawaii or Maui is probably winter overall and I would say winter or like the latter part of fall through winter to the early part of spring that's a span of about six months okay and that starts pro that's basically in line with whale season so the best time to be in Hawaii is whale season or in Maui is whale season and that's another thing you can do now so for your last day in, in Hawaii going out or in Maui going out on a bang spend some time on a boat get a boat you you know you can go out you can go out to um, I mean this is this is a little bit of a an adventure but go to, you can go to Lanai on a boat or you can take like the Pride of Maui to Molokini or one of these other rafting companies to uh, Molokini depending on if you're staying in Kihei or in um, Kanapali over by Lahaina you know, it's definitely a long haul to get to Molokini from Lahaina. It's not a long haul to get to Molokini from Ma'alea or from Kihei Boat Ramp. Kihei Boat Ramp's really close, actually. So yeah, I, now when you're snork, when you're on one of those boats, it's just like it's just like one last adrenaline rush thing to do. Not really too many dolphins in Maui, like there is on Big Island and Kauai, and even Oahu. But Maui's a great place to, during whale season to just chill out with um, whales. So with all that being said, guys, I hope this um, gives you some insight into some things, some ideas and things. Obviously, there's a, a bunch of stuff that I didn't even mention that, you know, you can add to the list. Um, you know, like golfing, luau's, um, the aquarium, Maui Ocean Center. And I'm going through this list just to... To kind of you know close give you some closure on some stuff also zip lining uh, the the bamboo trail PPY um, there's if you're into tours you can do like ocean vodka organic farm and distillery up in Kula there's the Banyan tree park in Lahaina taking in a sunset is something that you probably would want to do I mean, one or two sunsets, you, two, every night you probably could take in a sunset, right? That would be if you're here for seven days. If I say seven days, you could do it in four days. Four days in Maui is the minimum. You need at least four days. I don't see how you could leave here feeling fulfilled with any less than four days. You, four to seven days is your range. So anyways, all right guys, subscribe to the channel if you like. I talk about other things other than Hawaii, but most of it has been lately Hawaii. See you guys.